couple more for, snowmobiles. But for, for yourself. So we know your, your style, your sort of, you know, high style. How, would you guess how he lives out in the country? L roll this film, and I'm going to show you how Muhammad lives uh, in his very home out in the uh, training camp. I, I think it might surprise you. No. Have you ever been there? You it haven't seen it. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise you. That's your bell, I take it. That bell rings every morning at 4.30, and every fighter in those two bunkhouses must be down here dressed by 5 ready to run. It rings uh, again at 8 o'clock for breakfast and 5 o'clock for dinner. 10 o'clock, everybody's in bed. Don't the neighbors get sore or the no, chickens? No, they don't give me no trouble. Most of them hear that bell, and they go to church. I want to see the inside of your house. Is oh, this come it? Come right. This is an old antique house, a replica of a 200-year-old cabin. Did Real you design water this pump, yourself? Designed everything. Old antique bed in it. Yeah. Coal stove. No electricity, coal oil lamps, everything is real. I just like in the yeah, days of Jack Johnson. As it can be no, that. come right in. Just like the days of Jack Johnson. But your phrases don't stand a chance. Wait a minute, I'm not through wiping my feet. No, well, come on in. Don't turn hey, on. I love what you've done with the place. Oh, yeah, this is all antique. I did all this up myself, Dick. This is a 200 year old rope bed here. 200 years old? This bed's old? just about, about 190 years old. How long did it take I just had it reinforced. That? And, uh, it's very nice. Everything is so you got antique. the bed's rope, the walls are solid. Real, uh, they tore down an old bridge, a uh, 95-year-old bridge, railroad bridge. And how, how do you make it look this. like real dirt on the walls? Well, this, that is real dirt. My friend mm -hmm. Harvey Mario, the construction man who yeah. built this place, he's going to clean all this off of it. I like it. It's crude. It's okay. That's the way I like it. No, I bet, it, I bet it I know what that is. What? A picture of a loved one. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> hey, all right. And real this is this around. is old table over here. How come you have this, a uh, this table weighs about 850 pounds? This is made out of a real oak tree. It was 600, really. Right? No, it's about I 850 suppose, pounds. Try to lift it. I suppose this the wood's still heavy. growing. Quite nice. This actually. is old antique uh, uh, pheasant I picked up. This is my real 150-year-old coal oil lamp. It was come from a rich man's mansion in Virginia back in 1817 something. Does he know it's missing? No, he don't know it. He's missing. But, I like uh, it in here. It's the really energy good. crisis don't bother me. I have coal oil lamps. I got the big old coal stove over here. Yeah. And the water pump right from the well under the ground. Everything's antique. Is that real? Can we look at the That's stove? That's a real coal stove. I'll show you this coal okay, stove. Okay, I'll Come follow on. you. Yes, Dick, this is my what, old... Do you have this wired for electricity? No, this is my old coal stove. I like the idea of getting up in the mornings, making my coal, getting real natural heat. Something you don't get nowadays. Everything's in gas and electric. And during the energy crisis, if things do get too bad, I can always retreat to right here. I got a big two or three tons of coal outside and my timber, and I start making my own fires, and I have a good time. I don't know why. I figured you more for lace curtains and lots of chiffon. No, nah, well, after the stuff. fights, after the fights, I go back to my cherry home, and yeah. I live in the modern things. But I like this rough thing. Right. Over here, this is my old antique water pump, a dick. This goes 300 feet in the ground. I don't drink all that water you drink in the city. You like the to be chlorine really... and yeah. stuff. And this is this is real, no pollution. This comes right out of the ground. Let me just let it. Nice cold. Take a taste of that, dude. Oh, it looks nice. Something swimming in it. No, it's that's bubbles. Dude. Oh, it's bubbles. Let oh, me get let me get another batch of water. Right. Let's, let's get some. When you're in New York, do you stay in Central Park, or what? Uh, well, yeah, I'd rather prefer staying there. There's more wrestle than Oh, hotel. that's good. <laughs> that is nice. Don't be funny. Dude. No, that's really nice. So you... this is my old water well and, and my old dishes and stuff here. And these you got... things are hundreds of years old. No electricity in here. No electricity. How do you watch television? No television. I go over in my kitchen to watch television. What do you watch? But, uh, I watch the Johnny Carson show most <laughs> They can't have a show sometimes. <laughs> Carton, who's got the most colored guests on? The most colored? Most mm -hmm. colored guests, yeah. Oh, I see. What colors do you prefer? But uh, <laughs> tonight that you have me, and now that me and Joe Frazier's on your show, I guarantee you everybody will have a Do you think ratings. he'll show up for you? I think he'll show up. He told me he's the only one who's got enough guts to call you Cassius. Well, I'm going to straighten him out. After this fight, he will be glad to call me Muhammad Ali. I promise you that Joe okay. Frazier, after this fight, will be glad to call me Muhammad Ali. We'll see about that, and uh, we'll see you uh, right there in New York. And I can whoop Joe Frazier, and can you whoop Johnny Carson? Can I have another glass of dirty water? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
still working. I got a couple more bunkhouses to build. And uh, my friend, Lou Beltrami, he's a big construction man up there. And Harvey Mario, they went out and they finding these logs and these rocks and everything. Huh? Doing a little publicity right now. I suppose he's getting I a rake said, off on this. I said uh, Lou Beltrami. Oh, I think my it's, construction yes. man is now putting me right. up two more of those cabins. Oh, Lou Beltrami. There's yes, a, and, my, uh, and my <laughs> one, of my, <laughs> one of my business advisors, Gene Kilroy. Oh, he's oh, also going to help no me kidding. to operate a boys camp. Don't you yeah, feel Gene like Kilroy? Have you heard of, have you heard of Gene Kilroy? Don't you think Kilroy? we have enough commercials have in you the heard show? Of Gene Kilroy ain't no commercial. <laughs> oh, he's oh, my man. What kind of equipment do you use? Yeah, same to you. What kind of equipment? No, say, watching that, though, watching these films, have you learned anything from each other? Uh, were, were you surprised that he lived that crudely? Uh, that's good living, ain't crude. I, I wish I'd gotten well, down to your camp. Right. No, that's, that's really all right for people who believe that, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, you know... You gotta have a high culture. I don't believe that, you know. I don't believe that. Uh, you gotta have a high culture. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the man is up there trained, that's true, and... Uh, but uh, from looking at that building, I don't really see how he can be comfortable in there at night. All these people out there. there who understand uh, know that <coughs> Because it's very easy to catch a cold. And, catch uh, a cold? I know better what it's all about up there. He probably, he probably just let you look that at the building for that stove is so hot. Work, My but, stove uh, is so hot in the back of that tent. Yeah, I believe that when you put some wood in it. But therefore, late at night, it gets like, what, 17 to 18 up in that mountain. I know. So you think that's a fraud? Yeah. He really has a nice electric blanket inside. You better believe it. Yeah. You better believe it. Television. Yeah. Uh, phones in the car. Phones in the, in the cars. And, uh, I saw those cars. Walking talkies and things like that. Oh. You know, I, I tell you, I did want to come down to your camp. But, you welcome uh, anytime. Well, Michael and I flipped a coin and I lost. Well, I think Michael had enjoyed himself, but uh, <coughs> he didn't have a chance to, like, uh, can we, can uh, no, we didn't have a chance folks. to, like, move around uh, and. Take a, a look in the gym. Look, like Joe, you and I on TV at the same I time. Am, uh, I have a lot of more than stuff. You know, I, uh, I go for a lot of more than stuff. No fancy stuff. And really, are they going like, to believe this in England? Uh, oh, do they? They just no, didn't no, have right. time. Well, like, uh, you know, check the gym out like you want, but the gym is really modern, and it's uh, real nice. Uh, everything is is uh, beautiful uh, at my hand. And where I live, where I live now, it's, uh, I live out of my home since uh, October. And, uh, I got a great idea. Really Joe, I got to interrupt you. I got a great idea. Get that shot up on the screen again. Okay. How do I look like a bitch? Now, look, face this way, Muhammad. No, you don't like no face this way. This is publicity. No, face this way. And lean, it, lean this way a little bit. No, no, turn, just turn your head, face, now pucker your lips up like you're going to kiss somebody. <laughs> and you turn, you turn that way, no, this way, just turn this way. Would you, yeah, just, you keep just, imagining, I'm going to tell the people what's happening. <laughs> Don't you think Wait it would have been? No, 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 ain't I'm that way. I'm talking to him. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. I thought you were going to start getting the cold stuff. And I'm talking to oh, him, okay. please. Are there any things we should really be discussing here? Uh, has it, I mean, there's a lot of it. Can I ask him a question? Yeah, yeah so let bring this into about, perspective. Yeah, just yeah. I hate to come all this way and ask a question. Um, what about what happens Fire. if you lose to all that, all that stuff you've got? The next question. <laughs> <laughs> what happens Const if I lose? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. If what I happens? lose, yes, yeah. a good question, but look. Here's it, why it's a good question, because if, after all you've said about him, if you lose, you'd have to leave the business. Get the I next mean, debt for the next, the closest communist country I can find. What? Catch the next debt for the closest communist country to America. What communist. does that mean? Communists. Uh -huh. Get out of here. Really? Why? To lose a Joe Frazier after all of this talking and acting and then walking out there. Oh. You mean you'd have to go behind the I'm iron curtain? Really you really can't there. lose. Terrible I'm not worried about losing. He I don't really there. don't think he about it. Never, I have made no preparations for the loss. You I'm down to 210. I'm moving like I should move. I'm no longer playing. I'm boxing. This man comes in. <laughs> anybody can hit him. All his farm partners are ramming him every day. And they are nothing to me. No class. Right. No footwork. No speed. <laughs> when I get those little bitty gloves on, and be real serious and no plan, no Wonder standing what they're gonna corner, put on me. just sticking and moving. All he's got is some hooks and they What prove, kind of gloves I'm gonna have? That he, I, he can't stop me. What kind of gloves I'm gonna have? Nobody stops me. He, last you answer night, that. Man's what kind of gloves question. I'm gonna have? You have on the same gloves as last time. What are they gonna put on you me? You have on the same thing as last time. Last time was something. 
Now, that sounds silly. Another thing. crazy question. Everybody know he's going to have on gloves like All me. All right, that's why you're talking like that's like another point. What am I going to have on? Okay, you prove it. You have on gloves like me. We always have on the same. All right, just get the old man. We ain't got to be. Down. You can hit him accidentally and you can, can break a finger or What do you think I'm trying to do? Why, anything you like. Oh, I just Don't can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, I want you so bad. Do I have to stay? Do I have to stay? I think you better sit down. You, just... you want me so bad. So bad. I just can't wait. Boy, you're going to be in trouble. 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 You're they gonna come to get me out of the victory party. Yeah, they're gonna put you in I better believe it. You better believe it. I think they're really getting mad. <laughs> you think they're going uh, let's, Listen, we do have a commercial. You I'd love to see you fight, but, uh, but the audience... No, your trainer just you know fainted I'm... because he knows you can hurt a finger this way or hurt something, and the fight would be you. over. What's behind you? <laughs> You've been acting... You've been You've been You've been acting ever since we came you're just joking now. They know you're joking. No, sir. We have a message. Uh, we'll be, we'll be right, right back. You're in the wrong seat. What's your show? That seemed to be you on the. You're in the. Oh, right. Say, uh, I think it's time to announce that that man on my right in the red jacket. I looked this up in a, in current biography, and I found out that as a kid, you were a marbles champion. <laughs> crossed my heart, and the obvious question is, do you still have your marbles? And uh, <laughs> I, I really wanted to get that one in. No, we you were, know, seriously. The thing about it, we were uh, shooting marble today, and... Uh, he wasn't. There were two girls one day. One was black, and one was white. And uh, the white girl was on, supposed to be on my side. Yeah. And uh, somehow it would switch around, and he said he had to go in Harlem for... He didn't want the white girl on his side, so I'll take the white girl, he take the black girl. And somehow, <coughs> the game the, got the other way, and the white girl knocked out two marble one time. It was his partner. You said? Yeah, that was his partner. Silly. It didn't make no sense. Whatever he said. It makes all of us sense. What he said, you words, said he, he, he just tried to talk. No, there's I a moral in that, I have a feeling. You fighters me talking, you fighters oh, can't talk. Man. It's Listen, a, it was two, it was two kids, right? Two kids. Two girls, two right? Oh, two. And then it was him and myself. What happened? Man, how are you going to match wits with me? I speak in colleges and universities. I just turned down a professorship at Oxford. Did you know I was also a professor at Oxford? A poetry. A poetry, right? I barely got out of high school, and I have so much common sense until they offered me a professorship at the highest university in the world, right? And I didn't have time to take it. And you're going to set up here and match with me. You out your mind. You just wait. Just wait. Yeah. You, you just wait. Either, you just wait. Can I ask you something? Oh, man, you just wait. Can I ask you this? Listen, I'm going to put a whooping on you. Yeah, like I want to whoop you so bad. Before. We know about that. I'm going to put a whooping on you. you yeah, I'm talking believe. to a man, a man. I'm going to put a whooping on you like you ain't never had a No, before. don't. Get you Please, you can hurt yourself. You really can. I saw Angelo Dundee get very frightened there because you were pulling around. You can hurt your finger or break a... I've been dreaming about this night. I've been wanting you so bad. Hey, shut up. Wait, for God's sake, both of you. Just hold it. Grab Matt Hodge, second ass. Hey, 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 Matt Hodge, second ass. You can't get no crazy in me. Don't be acting like you're crazy. You can bluff him, but you can't bluff me. Just, just you got him scared of because you, because you got the connection and the complexion. Listen, but you don't scare me because I'll tell you to haul just, just, It's a deal. Okay. Seriously, have, <laughs> folks, has anybody ever asked either of you, think hard and anis, answer honestly, to take a dive? <laughs> And then I've asked us yeah. to take a dive, yeah. Ever in your career? Once, just once. Seriously? 
Yes. T tell about it in a calm voice. Well, last time you was at my camp, you told me to take a dime. Uh, oh, <laughs> no, I meant really. I can't remember anybody ever asking me to do anything like that. Can I ask you another serious question? Since it's so quiet in here and we all could use the rest. Does it cross either of your minds that one of you could kill the other in the ring? No. Never thought about that. Never think Doesn't. about it. Just like airplane pilots, they have a worse job than me. Yeah. You know, flying through them thunderstorms and big old jets and one thing go wrong, they explode. I mean, like car racers riding that thing at 200 miles an hour, all that iron and steel blowing up and burning up. It happens in England. It happens horse races, ice hockey, football. More dying football than boxing. So you just figured it never happened to you. I'm sure the people who are now watching this show, uh, I hate to say it, but next week when your show come on or whenever it comes on, a lot of those people are going to be dead. But isn't it? <laughs> so what are we going to say? Yeah, it could happen. Well, I but hope we they're hope not, not sitting in the and audience. Our intention, uh... our intention is not to kill. No. Yeah, but, I mean, so we believe it can happen. See how nice I handle that stuff, boy? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> you handle it. I mean, Roy. Because see, you, you're in the mood to talk. See, I'm not. I'm ready to go to work. I know you ain't in the mood to talk. That's right. I'm ready to fight. You ain't never in the mood. Yeah, there's a I'm line in Shakespeare, talkers are no good doers. I'm going to yeah. end your name in you this country. You better give it to I'm me. I'm going to get you but out I of got boxing. For you. you fool. The line That's in Shakespeare really went I over big, you. didn't it? <laughs> you fool. That's what you think. I promise you, you finish. That's what you think. Invest one. Someone, one of one of the quiet people has a question. Yeah. Michael, your turn. Over. What about this thing, though? Have you ever considered, though, I mean, a professional prize fighter, you're taking lots of blows to the head, both of you, throughout your career, with the possibility of, say, permanent brain damage? Sure. Not well, me. I never look at it that way. Uh, just like you say, you know, the football player, basketball player, anything could happen. Yeah, cars. You can wait up, More wake people up in are killed in this country in cars than war. Let and what we can do, quit driving cars? We heard that. Let me tell it, put it another and way. And I know Let you're me... not concerned about two black fathers' brains being hurt that much now. <laughs> I know you're not that wrapped up over our brains. You really consider, you really worried about my brains? Or just... anybody else's brains? Yeah, we not worried sure. about it. So why are you, we not worried about, you should worry about what else is happening in the world. Why are you so, why are you so obsessed with our color? I have a feeling you have a little white jockey because up in front of your house Because it just don't seem that. right. <laughs> With a little uh, statue, you know, you know of no, me. No, I just have to look at me like it's so bad because we are the world's two greatest fighters and we're making millions of dollars in one night and it just don't seem like that you just don't like the idea of us doing it. Okay. You do it. You got own countries. You I, you, you, you own Rolls Royces and you got more minks than him and perhaps, me no. and you ain't whoop nobody. So we just wonder why no, you're wait. so upset over what we make or why we hurt. Why us? It happens every day to all of us. What if a 12-year-old kid came to you? A 12-year-old black kid or white kid, either one. No, listen, listen. And he said, I, I got a good physique, and I want to fight. I'm 12 years old. It's That's now, now 1973. You Would you tell him to go into professional boxing? Ask him for see what he say. Joe? Well, I think I would. Uh, you would? The kid first have to have the mind into it that he wants to be a boxer. Can't just go out there and say, well, I'm going to be a boxer. You know, take a lot of time, ask a lot of work. Ask him. Let me, <laughs> let me add, add this to it. For years, it's been a cliche. Oh, stop, man. No, Joe, just a second. Me. Let me ask you. I want to hear your answer to this. Oh, There's been a cliche me. that a black man in this country had either athletics or show business, and that was about all he could make it big in, and, and you know, for years. That's not true anymore. With that in mind, would you still tell a 12-year-old kid of your own to go into the now, professional Now, ask fight? me a question. Yes. Number one, I say, kid, your chances of being a great fighter are good enough to make a good living is about a hundred thousand to one. And if you spend the most of your life trying to be a fighter and you get hurt or you don't make it, your whole life is ruined. It's too late to get education. It's too late to look for a trade or something to fall back on. I say, no, take your education, take your mind while you quick for developing, go to school, learn to read, learn to write, be a mechanic, be a doctor, be a lawyer. Go now, learn, get your mind conditioned, spend one day. Same with basketball, same with football, same with baseball. You can't be like Muhammad Ali or Joe Frazier. We are two little black boys who came up to be the biggest draw in the whole world. And don't think because I made it, I'm going to tell you to go box. No. Get your brains together, box exercises, but get your brains together, get educated, and get a trade. Because you might not make it, and there's too much risk involved. No. Go to school. That's the best thing. That's the best thing to tell him.
Yeah. They come to me all the time. Should I want to be a boxer? Can I train you? I said, no. Can you read? You can't hardly read. Can you write? No. I'm lucky. You know, a lot of kids will be influenced by hearing you say this tonight. I'm telling the truth. What about the people, though, who don't like boxing? Or they kind of don't box. Look how he makes it. <laughs> how can you justify boxing as a sport to those people who say it's not a sport, but it's hateful? Hateful? Yeah. Well, it's, your, it's the, it's the action. I'll tell you this. It's immoral, number one, when the blacks are dominating. When Mars Allen was fighting, there wasn't so much protest. When Gene Tune is fighting, oh, Jack nonsense. Dempsey. No, that's let me tell nonsense. you. I'm telling you. I'm telling the you. The argument's as old as boxing let me, let, me, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I don't hear the argument nowhere. But let me tell you. It's the action that makes it. It's, it's the purpose that makes a thing right or wrong, not the action. I can kill him and kill you. The same judge can say I'm right for killing him, wrong for killing you. While I kill him, I caught him molesting my wife. I don't get a day in jail. I killed you because we were arguing over who was going to win this fight. Both of the actions was killing, but what determines them right or wrong is the purpose. My purpose is not to kill when I go in the ring. Our purpose is not to kill. It's not immoral as long as our purpose is not immoral. So but, 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 you're, but, but, but what kind of sport is it? Can it be? Where, what kind of sport where is guy, sport? Where a guy goes you. in a ring and gets his job broke. Watch our handling. Instance. Watch our handling. What kind of sport is this? When a guy gets into the damn car in your country and go around a damn track and hit a pole and he burn up. <laughs> what kind of sport is that? And a bunch of fools go to watch him. Well, you're assuming well, that he thinks that's good. Yeah, Maybe he doesn't. No, well we'll, well, we'll talk about outlawing that. Well, why do, well, do why don't get on our low sport? <laughs> we don't have nothing over in no way but a job, and few of us can't get nothing unless we can box. And now you want to run that out? Well, you go over to England and stop some of your sports. Well, now I don't see no black folks out there going 90 million miles. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get on them. Don't get on us. Okay, we got. I got to take a pause. See, I can handle them, Joe. It's just time. <laughs> I got to ask you this. Joe tells me there's a rumor that Ella Fitzgerald, if she hits high C, can fracture your jaw. <laughs> He's trying to same just change the subject and start talking about some foolish we because we'll this be is right so intelligent. We'll be right back. We'll be yeah, right back. Uh, we'll, you don't match we'll with right me. My apologies to Larry Merchant backstage. We ran out of time. Thank you, Michael. You're obviously two great athletes, and I uh, want to see. I hope, I hope to be there Monday we night. Are. Well, it's just obvious, and that's why I said it. And uh, thank you both for being here. We'll see you two weeks from tonight. Good night. Thank you.